Hey everybody, this is Eric Enga. I am the CEO of Stone Temple Consulting, and I'm really pleased to have with us today AJ Cohn. <laughs> you can never need, get enough AJ Cohn. I need more AJ <laughs> Cohn in my SEO. <laughs> <laughs> more cowbell, all right. Yeah, there you go. No, I got you got to hand that to me. So, of course. Mark ordered a cowbell from <laughs> Amazon, and he didn't really think it was the kind that was really meant to be worn on a cow. He was to get the musical kind, and instead we got this rather sad thing. So I just want to put in a disclaimer that no cows were harmed in the filming of this. Uh, hang out, just for... <laughs> there you go. Excellent. So, uh, so AJ, with that uh, rousing introduction, can you... Uh, just give a, a little uh, about yourself, please. Sure. Uh, my name is AJ Cohn. I am owner of Blind Five Year Old, which is a digital marketing firm that specializes in search. A uh, little bit about me, I guess, uh, way back when. I uh, have a background in advertising, was in direct marketing for a while. I did the dreaded telemarketing, I did direct mail, ended up to find uh, the new world in the internet back in 2000, uh, rode the uh, sort of roller coaster uh, 1.0 and crashed and got spit out and then got back on uh, and then found uh, search and have moved on from it. So, wait a minute, you, you said specializing in search. Yes. You didn't say specializing in SEO. No, no, I didn't say SEO. Um, though I probably could, I probably could say it. Okay, so so let let's start with uh, a good classic uh, uh, conversation. Um, uh, the phone rings, you pick it up, and the person on the other end says, "You know, uh, hi, I'm I'm uh, Buck. I run Buck's Beauty Parlor, and I could use me some SEO." <laughs> Right. Uh, well, first, phone's not what I would pick up, but it would be an email. <laughs> yep, well, okay. Then you get this email. I get uh, an email, yes. I hate the phone, um, except for playing games. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, that's what they're asking. You know, uh, the industry, the way people talk about uh, what they want, they use the term SEO. Uh, and I think... Obviously, a lot of people have preconceived notions of what that is. Uh, I've done presentations on exactly what SEO is and tried to explain it uh, in various and sundry ways. I think um, some people will approach it and think of it sort of as the old school way. Uh, how many links can I get? Here are my three money terms. I want to rank uh, X for them. Uh, can you help me? Right? Um, and those are the ones where I say, no, I can't. Have a nice day. Um, then there are others who are coming to you and they're using SEO. Uh, the intent behind it isn't that specific. It is, I want to generate more traffic to my site. My business needs help. Uh, and like it or not, they're using SEO because, well, there's this big thing called Google and it drives a lot of traffic and that's where people are trying to find me. I need to get better there. Um, and there's still a rather, I think, black box nature to how people perceive how they can show up there. So I think uh, at that point, it's my job to look at it from a somewhat traditional standpoint of SEO, but also to sort of bring in the other disciplines of digital marketing and to say what you really need is a digital marketing strategy and plan. Um, I frequently can talk to people uh, and tell them, you know what, SEO is not where you should be dedicating your resources. Uh, you should be dedicating your resources to, uh, you know, uh, sponsorships or radio or biz dev or conversion rate optimization or, hey, your product sucks, you know, you can put lipstick on a pig all day long, but it's still going to be a pig, so fix that and everything else will become a lot easier. Um, so I, I talk myself out of a lot of work a lot of times, uh, simply because, uh, you know, 
they'll start talking and they'll say, well, that's great, but that's really not your problem. Um, search is part of the landscape, but it's it's rarely the only thing. And so yeah. that's that's sort of how I I think of it at the end of the day. Right. So I, I agree that uh, search is rarely the uh, uh, the only thing. Um, uh, you know, I had a conversation with uh, someone earlier today, and it's like they're they're trying to deal with a panda penalty, and um, I'm I'm trying to get them to that there are major aspects of their business model that are broken, and that's really at the, the root of the problem. Um, and and I'm I'm really trying my best to. Uh, uh, you know, light the fuse and the stick of dynamite and throw it under the, the business model plan, but they keep using a pair of scissors and cutting off the, the fuse before the sizzling part gets past where they're cutting. Right. Uh, and um, and it's, a, you know, it's a very frustrating kind of thing because, um, you know, it's like, it, it, I'm probably being more too detailed here, but the situation is it's like, uh, okay, you do understand that every time we try something, we're going to wait four months to see if it worked. So we probably don't want to go through ten loops of that because we'll be out of business by then. So let's get out the the uh, surgical tools and you know dismantle the, the the structure and approach to the business and start over again and leverage and save salvage what we can of what you have. And um, uh, so I have similar conversations, absolutely. You know, and I think. One of the things I find, um, and it sounds like this is someone who had some traffic at some point, right? Because if they had a panda penalty, right, they, they, were, they had something. It's very difficult, I think, for some people to make bold changes, the changes that are necessary to say, hey, I've got to adapt. Uh, you know, it's not 2008 anymore, and in fact, it's not even 2010 anymore. Uh, it's time to, to figure something out. Uh, instead, it's like, how much, what's the minimum amount I can do to get back to what I was at, right? Instead of really blowing things up, like you said, let's put this, you know, let's blow this up, let's build it back up, let's do, you know, Bionic Man. It's going to be better, stronger, faster. Uh, but uh, it's scary, right? I mean, you know, uh, it's natural inertia thing that happens. But I think that's what. I mean, we can only be as a good advocate, right, uh, and to get in there. Um, for larger companies, and if we want to pivot the conversation a little bit, um, there's one new term, one new phrase, one new type of person who generally has a better chance of getting traction with that kind of message, and that's the growth hacker. Because um, my experience is that when companies hire growth hackers, and if it's a good growth hacker, they come in saying, it's about growth. That means I can touch anything, right? Um, and that's the one piece. That's the only reason why the term, in my opinion, has any traction is because, uh, and I've seen growth hackers in action because uh, I've worked with some of them in companies. And it is great. They can go in and just basically say, this product, this product doesn't work anymore. It's, it's retarding your growth, right? It, it needs to either die or change. And, you know, because it's like, oh, you're the growth hacker, right? Suddenly, you know, okay, we'll do it. Um, it gives so, you freedom to do more just because you have a better a better title, essentially. You get a better title, exactly. It's a, oh, well, the growth hacker says that we can do it, so there's there's my out. And so, yeah, and, and so it's, uh, that's been sort of the, the vehicle that I think makes that an interesting title. Uh, they're still doing what, what we do, right? What an SEO would do, what a digital marketer would do, whatever you want to call it, um, business advisor, you know, who knows? But uh, you know, I think it's it's the ability to affect change uh, at a more fundamental level. Um, and I think the one post I wrote, I think uh, two years ago, was you know, I I basically said you can be a burger flipper, right? So you can basically be the guy in the back and, you know, the stuff comes in and it's this hydrogenated frozen patty and they say, go and make this work on the search engine. Do your link stuff and all that crap and, you know, here you go. Um, and that's fine. 
And there's a business for that. There are lots of people doing that, right? We know that. Look at in any city, in any place, there are tons of them. Uh, but that's not, that's not what I want to do, right? Uh, and it's fine for people who want to do that. Me, I want to be Hubert Keller. I want to be the chef. I want to be the guy who says, hey, this is what the place should look like. This is uh, how we should serve people. The type of food that we order should be of this quality. I want to, it should be presented in this way, and it should have you know, X experience when they're at the restaurant, yada, yada, yada. That, to me, that's what uh, the role should be. So that when I get down to the point where I want to do all of that technical stuff, and the technical stuff is fun, I like it, but um, I want a good product, right? I don't want to have to have some crappy product and try and fix it and make it work in search. It makes my job tough. Um, and uh, I don't want a tough job. <laughs> I want my job to be easier. So if I can fix it upstream, that's what I want to do. Uh, and that makes my clients successful, and it makes me successful, and that's a, that's a win. Right. So let's set, uh, tease out one of those definitions that we've talked about here now, which is uh, you have the situation where someone says they're an SEO, or they're an SEO company or an SEO agency, however they like to label themselves. And it, to them, it means, you use the term burger flipper, but you know it's coming out of a can. Here's the stuff we do. Don't worry, it will help you. It helps everybody, right? And, and even if we stay within a relatively tight definition of the term SEO for the time being, which we'll just call getting people more organic search traffic um, uh, I'm use well. That's actually not necessarily the narrowest definition. <laughs> I know people will argue with that too. But yeah. uh, um, so you know, the, like the uh, just to get into some of that controversy, uh, you know, a year ago or even in a recent SMX advanced, I saw someone uh, stand up and and talk about how getting uh, guest blog posts with. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, embedded rich anchor text links was the way to go, and and this is what they were pitching uh, people on, and and that's their entire business. That's all they do. Right. Um, and it's like, really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, to me, that's the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hang a big uh, well, a big target on my back. And in the front, it's going to say, you know, Google, come take me. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's like that. That's kind of, you know, what it what it feels like when somebody talks about that stuff. And so that happens all the time. But the point is, you get your burger uh, burger flipper type, where that's all they do, and to them, that's SEO. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Maybe if we take out some of the spammy elements of what I was talking about. Uh, for a small business that can't afford real consultative time, mm -hmm. it might make sense to have a little bit of burger flipping SEO as long as you had someone doing it responsibly. Yeah. You know, quick duplicate content check, uh, quick uh, crawlability check, uh, uh, quick keyboard, uh, a keyword, uh, uh, you know, audit. Um, and broken link building, broken, you know, chart. Meta descriptions. Uh, yeah. Um, and you know it's, it's in a package. It costs 500 bucks, and you know that's it. Um, is it perfect for what they could get? Uh, well, uh, you could certainly argue that you could optimize more, but I'm going to argue that it actually is perfect because it has the right match of budget and making sure they get some value out of it. All right? It's true. So um, you know, if it's a large brand, uh, not so much, right? Yeah, I mean. I, uh, I'll be honest. I, I gave up on trying to service small businesses. Right? Doesn't scale. Doesn't scale for my business model. Um, and it's not that I don't. Uh, I think it's it's still a powerful thing for them, but it is. I mean, it's they're not the uh, the demand and and uh, the type of quality that they receive. It, it's not fun. I mean, I, I would not want to be in their shoes. I just, I would not. It's, uh, it's not a good position to be in. Uh, you know, there's some good local providers, right? So if you're just wanting to optimize for local, 
uh, I think that's a market which is now fairly well served. Um, yeah. There, there are a couple out there that I, I refer folks to. But if you're a small business who's like, I need to do this this stuff with content and SEO and social, I mean, I think most of them don't quite understand the, the scale of what they need and so they start to search and this is all, the only thing they can afford and it's okay but it, you know it's better than nothing probably but it's certainly not gonna make them run home and and say I really love this uh, this experience which is why SEO has such a bad name among other things right so even the providers who are providing decent service don't get raves because it's just, you know, hey, $500 plan, we do X, Y, and Z, your traffic goes up by 20%, and that means your leads go up by X percent more. They're happy, but they're not jumping up and down saying it was the best money I ever spent. Well, it, it certainly is enough of those people out there who are just uh, really skimming their money and, and, and providing no value at all or, or even doing harm, which is Absolutely. really part of it. And, yeah, no, we, we don't uh, have the ability to saw, uh, serve uh, smaller businesses here. We're, we're really oriented towards large enterprises, uh, well, and medium enterprises as well, uh, but, uh, you know, bigger companies. And, in fact, you know, so we have certain minimum amounts, you know, so, so that we charge, and if you're not willing to pay the minimum, then, then it means that we can't afford to do a good job for you. That's kind of the, the way we translate that. And it's funny because I had a conversation about three months ago with somebody who had a relatively small business, and and you know when I recognize that, I usually a tactic I'll use to try to get them to realize that it's not a match is um, you know I'll let them know kind of what our, our minimum pricing models are, and um, and that's the way of trying to end the conversation. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, a, a, another way to do it, of course, which uh, I'm going to just paraphrase what you said earlier. Uh, you know, they start talking. You say, "Have a nice day." Click. Yeah. Um, I, I know you didn't quite position it that way, but uh, um, <laughs> yeah. But the problem was in this particular conversation, and this happens sometimes. People will say, "Well, if you can show me that I'll get a good return on my money," and, it, and I, I had this one person. I just kept trying to push them into, I'll refer you to someone who works with smaller businesses like yours. Right. And he uh, succeeded in wearing me down. Um, and and so I took you know the agreement at our minimum. So we were getting paid enough that we ought to be able to do a good job for him. Um, it was a mistake, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, OK, if you know, it shouldn't, unfortunately, just be about whether or not they will pay your minimum. It has to be whether or not. They have the right mindset, yes. You know, because if your minimum is a fortune to them, right, they're gonna be all over the map and crazy. And this is what happened. And we've since, you know, separated from them. And uh, I feel bad about it, but uh, you know, that happens. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll stray into a different territory, I guess. But yeah, I mean, I, uh, uh, I mean, a, uh, I'm in a good position where, yeah, I mean. Part of it is finding the right clients, uh, and right now I'm in a position where I can actually choose the right clients, and I recognize that's a luxury. Uh, it's a luxury that I that I helped create, obviously, because I worked my ass off and I, I did great work, so that I kept getting referred, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, it I've been burned that way too, where it's like oh, I really want to help this person, and I know they're they really, and you know, I try, and then it's like oh boy, right? that that. That was not that was not fun. That that should not have been something I had done. But I think it's uh, the mindset is critical, right? It's not just about that. I'll also say the resources are critical. I often, uh, you know, I'll screen for that and basically say, you know, if I toss over these type of recommendations, do you have a dev team who can actually execute? Because I'm not going to be doing it. Um, so if I tell you you need to create a you know structured XML sitemap, I don't want you coming to me and saying, "Can you do that for me?" That should be a really simple task for someone on your dev team to. to so, um, it's tough. I mean, that's the problem. And if you're a small business or even a medium-sized business, then as I said, then you get the double whammy, right? It's it's a high price tag for the consulting services. Then I gotta have a team in place who actually knows what to do with this stuff. 
um, it's tough. Uh, apart from the fact that then I'm going to come out and say, oh, by the way, the usability on your site is really crappy, and you really need to change X, Y, and Z. Uh, and then it's like, oh, well, my design is managed by this other company. So then I'd have to call them, and then they come, right? So it, it's, it's tough. Uh, there are lots of things that get in the way. Yeah, so we have a question in here from Jeffrey Dodd. Uh, folk, uh, oh, sorry, I picked up the wrong one. I wanted to add that one. It's the one that I want to ask. I've saved up 2175 for your minimum package. I want a number one position for travel to Australia. What's your reply? <laughs> um, so my reply is um, I'm going to refer you to a guy I know. He's really good. His name is um, um, AJ Cohn, okay? So uh, AJ, one coming your way, all right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... I I mean, I get a lot. I had uh, I had a guy who uh, a private detective agency in the Philippines uh, and had like three key phrases he wanted to rank for. Um, and you know, it, I, I don't want to belittle these people because you know these are people who really they have a desire. They're trying to make their way. Uh, they just haven't. They're they're just not not in the right place, right? I mean, it's just tough. Uh, and I think. Uh, uh, one of my favorite posts, which no one else liked, uh, was uh, sort of uh, short stories about SEO. And I wrote a story about uh, basically the evolution of the Internet and the fact that, you know, eight years ago, that little Philippines detective agency would probably have been a huge success because no one else was on the Internet, right? Uh, and I still think people feel like the gold rush is, is there, right? I can go on the Internet and make my fortune. Woohoo! Right? Um, and then they get on the internet and they go, oh, look, there's 19 million other people here. And oh, those big companies who are sort of looking at the internet for years and years, like, eh, is this thing going to happen? Is it for real? They suddenly went, oh, yeah, this is, this is for real. We, we're we're going to have to move in. Right? And then it's, it's over. Right? Then it's. Uh, you know, everybody talks about the brand bias and, you know, oh, evil Google with their brand bias. It's like, it's, brand bias is user bias, right? Um, that's, Google's just following us, right? When we stop sharp, shopping at Target and Walmart and eating at Applebee's, then, uh, great, you know, then, then we'll see something different. But until that time, uh, you, you get what you get. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's a tough road. So let's um, uh, take another uh, slice at this question. Um, uh, 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 link building, oops, uh, uh, or content marketing, um, you know, these kinds of things, are they part of SEO? Uh, yeah. I mean, for me, they are. Uh, I take everything. I, I'm, I'm greedy. Uh, I'll take PR. I'll take email. I'll take display, I'll take product, I'll take UX. But I'll is that SEO? Absolutely. Okay, and it's SEO because? It's because when the customer says SEO, that's actually what they want at the end of the day. So the customer says SEO, uh, like my uh, my friend Buck in the beginning, who said, give me some of that SEO. Right. And, uh, and you translating that into... I'm going to evaluate how to get you more traffic. Right. Well, so I guess it would be, uh, let's see if I can make the analogy. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. Uh, or it's not even an analogy. Uh, it's intent, right? So, you know, in the past it was always keyword focused, right? You know, just get the keyword and da-da-da, right? Uh, but, you know, if you've been smart for years, you've kind of figured out, well, it's the intent behind the keyword, right? Keyword still matters, mind you, right? Uh, syntax still matters, but you need to understand the intent behind it to really do well. Uh, so that's all I do, right? SEO, great, but the intent behind that syntax is not the specific, I will give you the gold package of links and social bookmarking and forum spam. Uh, no. Services of AJ Cohen, I want to write this down. <laughs> Uh, social bookmarking, uh, forum comments. Uh, spun articles, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just want to make sure I refer you to the right business, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, so, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I simply take the intent. Now, sometimes, um, sometimes the customer doesn't know, right? And it's my job to educate them and say no, right? Or they're on the edge, like, you know, oh, we think we need this SEO, and I'm, I have to point them in another direction. That's my job. Uh, because to me, or it's my job to basically make them successful. If I think SEO flat and proper is the way to go, heck, I'll jump in and we'll do it, right? No problem. Uh, but it's generally not. It's generally much broader than that, you know? Hey, why are you marketing features instead of benefits? I don't know. Aren't the features good? Yes, but that's not why people are looking for what you do or what you buy or what you're selling. Um, so, you know, all those things come into play. Uh, I know internally, right, in the industry, so that's not SEO, you're not, you know, right? And guess what? I don't care. Uh, in, inside the industry, you can talk and you can say, yep, you're right, it's not you know what, the customer uses that syntax, that's how I get the business, that's how I turn into a digital marketing advisor, that's how I make their business more successful. So until they stop using the syntax SEO to find me and what I do and what I can do for them, I'm going to use it. That, and that I'm going to say it's SEO. And then I'll just grab everything and say, yeah, this is SEO. Um, and uh, I wrote that post, SEO is stone soup, and that's basically what I do as a when I'm with clients, right? Oh, you want SEO, that search stuff? Great. But you know what really goes good with, uh, with SEO? Conversion rate optimization. Yeah. Mm, uh, you got some of that? Great. You know what really goes good with all this? Yeah, some customer relationship management, maybe the retention marketing campaign. And you just keep going. Um, I, I don't see a lot of... Uh, I don't see a lot of value in SEOs trying to define it for themselves, I guess. Uh, it has to be what the customer uh, wants at an intent level and how they search for it. So I love RAND, you know, and, and inbound marketing is an interesting concept, but I no none of my clients have ever come uh, to me and really talked about that or are searching for that. It's a tough term. I think. Uh, and, right. Totally you know, agree. Uh, I, I you know I, I'm totally for it. I understand it. I think it's a cool thing, but whoo, that's a big headwind they're up against. Um, so and content marketing, uh, I don't know. I mean that's just another buzzword, uh, which really was created by Google. I mean, no one would be even talking about content marketing if it weren't for Panda and Penguin. I mean, that's, uh, it's, it's an entire vertical new thing, basically uh, sort of a, an accident based on Google's actions, which is fun. Um, I'll take content marketing as SEO too, right? I'll take social as SEO. I'll take it all. Um, so, uh, and it's not to say I don't like the traditional SEO stuff, though I, I would probably not be the, the link person. I've never been that happy with that. I've done it for a short time, but uh, it's not very exciting for me to do that kind of stuff. Um, but I see value in it. Um, I know it, it can work. But I think that's an outside or an inside looking out perspective versus a looking inside perspective. Too much navel gazing. Yeah, so I'm going to share a, uh, a PowerPoint slide that I did uh, uh, at the uh, Stone Temple sales conference, uh, uh, or uh, company meeting, I should call it. Uh, um, this is the, uh, the way I, I positioned us, right, which is uh, we're, we're this guy uh, or this uh, group of people on a surfboard uh, in riding in front of a wave, right? And the big wave is what all the large agencies know how to do. And we do all the stuff, whatever it might be, uh, that's in front of that wave. And so what, what we are going to be doing as a company two years from now will be defined quite differently than the way it's defined right now. Absolutely. Right? 
this is the the way we look at um, and it, it was pretty interesting conversation because a lot of what I was getting across uh, um, is that the organization needs to be dynamic right so hey it's great to optimize a procedure to squeak out you know five percent more efficiency but if that means that you have a bunch of people who have become you know uh, automatons on the keyboard and as soon as you change the definition they become useless that doesn't work right I mean it has to be that as soon as we say hey by the way uh, the right way to think about that is shifted in this fashion they go oh well here's some ideas as how that impacts it and they you know and you really have a kind of a different kind of situation going on because everybody in the whole picture Right, gets that um, uh, that the need is the need of the client is is going to differ, and each client is going to be different. That's part of it. But over time, what clients in aggregate are going to need is different too. Right? Could be as simple as a new social network will come out. That's right. Right? And it's like, uh, okay, what is this Google Plus thing? Oh, I guess that's not new anymore. But uh, um, so, yeah, um, and it was good uh, because they killed that one, right? But then again, evidently they killed Facebook and Twitter too. So, yes, um, uh, <laughs> we don't have to go into that entire conversation. But um, okay, so um, the o only part, you know, I'm an engineer by background, right? So uh, I can actually appreciate that some people want to use a precise technical definition that says, you know, on page uh, uh, SEO, or SEO means on page analysis of certain kinds of things, uh, crawlability, uh, uh, you know, duplicate content issues, title tags, meta tags, all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, and, and, you know, all of that's fine. Uh, so my technical side can appreciate that, but um, the, the last time that I was paid to be, uh, um, you know, a really an engineer uh, was uh, let's see, 19 uh, maybe 89. So I've been on the dark side. Uh, uh, I mean, the marketing and business side of things since then. So my business person is totally with you, AJ, on this. It's like, okay, uh, I have to interpret these things the way the, the person, the client coming at me is interpreting them. Um, and when they say, you've got to give me some traffic, uh, I'm going to try to solve that problem. I might restructure their business model. I might blow up their site. I might uh, uh, tell them to fire that. No, never mind. I probably don't get to that level of detail. But um, you know anything is fair game at that point, and it might be what they need is a massive uh, content marketing campaign, mm -hmm. um, and whether you call that SEO or not, that's what they need. Um, the other thing that's fun about this definition, because fun actually matters, and I suspect that this is part of what's in it for you, AJ. Uh, well, there's two things, right? It's like. I, I gravitate to the big picture. You can't stop me from doing it. I don't know how to stop myself from doing it. But I also like to do different things, right? So, uh, you know, if the solution is to figure out how to get a, a, a really interesting Instagram campaign together for them, um, cool. <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's go do that. Instagram, that's the answer. Um, and... Uh, um, it's not something I've personally done uh, anything with before. We actually have people here who have, but uh, I haven't done anything with it before. So yeah, I agree. I mean, that's that is part of it. Is uh, is that that challenge and that ability to do new stuff? So I, I you know, I th and I know some people might say, well, you don't know how, like you know, but you know, and it, right. Uh, but I know enough, right? I have a strong background in enough things that I can adapt and figure out new. Technologies, and that's half of my job. I mean, half of my job is just to figure out the next stuff, the things that are going to happen, so that my clients are ahead of that wave, right? Uh, you want to be the advisor that uh, I guess the uh, the Brits are—they like to say future-proofing, right? You know, so future-proofing, uh, 
you know, your efforts. Uh, and that's a lot of what I like to do. So I guess the best story I have for this is, you know, when I was first coming up from, uh, from tunnel marketing and direct mail, I did it for a university. I was raising money for education. So before anybody, you know, starts to really think poorly of me as the telemarketer on the phone. Um, but I came up and I said, okay, I got to do this internet thing because that's where direct marketing, the natural extension is going to be, right? Um, and uh, I started, uh, I was having an interview with somebody um, at, a, at a company about email marketing because that's what I wanted to get into because I thought it was the closest, you know, thing to direct mail and I'd done direct mail. And uh, I, I talked to the vendor as part of this, and uh, he was really great because he was, you know, pretty open about it. And we started talking, and I was like, oh, well, what about the source codes, and can you track this cohort versus that cohort, and, you know, are you doing any RFM segmentation? <laughs> he looked at me, uh, and he was like, you realize that most people don't know what the hell you're talking about. Like, no one in this industry knows what they're doing yet, right? And he's like... It's so new, most people don't even have half of the knowledge that you're bringing to the table. You're going to do just fine, right? Um, and I think that's what uh, what people fail to realize is, like, you know, if you've done some stuff and you've been in that, going to that next thing, you have, this is uncharted territory, so why not? Go there. Figure it out, right? I mean, uh, halfway through my freebase editing post, right? It's not that I'm some freebase editing master, right? I'm just going there and I know enough about stuff and I, you know, screw things up enough times until it works that you sort of go, oh, okay, so that's how it works. And then I blog about it and pass that information on to other folks. Um, that's, that's what we do, or it's uh, what we should be doing. So a definition of SEO is screwing things up? Is that, did I get that right? Uh, I actually tell people that... Uh, that they should expect that a lot of the stuff that we try is not going to work, and some of it might actually hurt. Um, you know, I tell people, you know, uh, baseball Hall of Fame problem. That's usually what I, I talk about, right? Uh, best hitters in baseball, they fail more often than they succeeded, right? 400 would be an epic you know, average. That means you failed six out of ten times. So uh, I try to tell people, look, we're going to do some stuff. Uh, and... A lot of it's going to work. Uh, some of it won't. If you are going to get white knuckled and you know cry in a corner when something doesn't work, uh, then we're probably not a good match. Because uh, I'm going to want to say, okay, fair enough, that one didn't work. Um, let's move on. Let's do the other stuff. Uh, I mean, there was a, uh, a nice post about A/B testing uh, that I saw the other day. Um, Sean Ellis, Kualaru, uh, who basically said, the more A-B tests you do, uh, the better. Like, you know, up the quantity that you're doing. The person who does uh, two every month or even one every week versus the one who's doing five every week, the one who does five every week will crush you, right? Because they're just, they're going to get more insight, they're going to get more, uh, more advances, and they're going to just blow you away. Uh, same thing. Right? You just got to try stuff. Keep doing stuff. Um, and uh, you're right. That's what makes it fun. <laughs> you get to try the stuff. And, uh, and uh, what's even more fun is, you know, uh, like you said, every site's different. Every client's different. So that, that thing that you said, oh, it'll work. Uh, I think this will work on this site. And you do it on that site. And it's like, huh, that didn't work. Uh, so you got to find the thing that works for that, that client. Uh, I think... One of my favorite posts uh, was a couple of years by Joe Hall. So yeah. He wrote uh, Postmodern SEO and basically said, it's different. Every client's different. What works for one isn't going to work for the other. Uh, trying to talk about it in any other terms is pretty stupid. Um, and uh, I tend to, uh, to agree with them. You know, it, uh, someone could say, Schema, just implement schema and everything works. And for some sites that'll work, and then on others, uh, it doesn't. It's just the way it is. So I got a question to ask you because this uh, still happens to me, is that I'll find myself, uh, uh, actually, by the way, sometimes the phone does ring here. Uh, <laughs> um, 
fortunately, I'm not the one who pick up the inbound calls anymore. But um, uh, but when I did, uh, I, I had experiences as little as a half year ago, where I'd pick up the phone, I'd be talking to this person, and then, you know. They'd be saying something like, "I need me some of that SEO stuff," and um, um, uh, yes, we need to get our meta tags configured, and and that to them was SEO, right? Right. Uh, that was the beginning and the end, and it was like, well, I mean, did you notice that uh, uh, you know Google thinks you have uh, 33 million web pages, uh, and uh, by my best guess, your site really ought to have 115. Sure. Um, uh, uh, you know, would you like help with that? No, no, that, that I don't need any help with that. So, okay, great. Um, oh, I'm back to the AJ line. Have a nice day. Hey, yeah, uh, you know, <laughs> it is. I, I, I'll say, you know, I don't. I'll say it as nice as I can, but you know, basically, like, well, then I don't think I can help you. You know, we're not a match. Have a nice day, uh, yeah. and that's it. Um, because yeah, I mean. Uh, there are times I will get a pitch somewhat like that, and it will be from a, a site or a company that was big enough that I look at and I go, boy, like, you should, you could use some help, right? And so sometimes in my reply I'll be like, yeah, there's this, but hey, a simple site search shows that you, your code mooning and every single one of your like dev and staging servers is indexed and da da da. Oh, and you know, by the way, this other thing, you no, know, you know, you do recognize that you have this entire, you know, uh, reputation management issue uh, that you have to repair. You know, and so I'll sometimes just send back that. Um, but you know, I've stopped doing that a lot because you know what happens when I send that back. You get more work because they ask more questions. And no, I get nothing back. <laughs> oh, well, there is that. That goes one way or the other. I have it where they do actually come back and, and they start getting this whole dialogue and they expect all these things to be answered. It's like, okay, I actually opened that can of worms and really I was just trying to, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's it's what not, I. I, 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 I you try to educate, right? You you want to do the right thing, but you're right. So, Sometimes you get into that conversation where it's like, "Oh, I didn't realize I was talking with a crazy person," right? And <laughs> right, and so you sort of figure out like, so it doesn't really matter what I'm going to say because at the end of the day, you're just going to say, "Yeah, but about those article submission sites, can we still get 50 of those?" Right? <laughs> uh, and you just have to sort of punt on it and say, "Ah, thanks very much. You know, have a nice day." I will say I've had a couple of those people who I had that frustrating dialogue with who have come back to me like two years later and been like, I get it now, right? You were, you were right, you know, but it took them just, you know, uh, what I call being on the treadmill, right? Because uh, they always want the rank fast quick scheme. So it's like, oh, I'll, I'll do this blog network. Oh, look, I'm... I'm on the first page, and I, you know, they pay, they pay a lot for that, but they get there. But then Google yanks that out, and they fall down, and so then they have to pay someone else for another bite at the apple, and it, it just repeats. Um, you know, I think it's funny. Yeah. It's not funny, but I mean, let's face it: the people who built a lot of those links are now the same people who are charging to get those links removed. Uh, so that's. Uh, it's tough. It's tough for those people. I feel for them, and that's why I usually try and tell them, um, try and do as much yourself then, right? Uh, here's some good resources. Start start doing it. Dedicate two hours a week to just trying to fix the title tags on your site or, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you know, unfortunately, some of them are allergic to even, you know, looking at the HTML or, or digging into PHP. Uh, and I probably overestimate people's desire to learn that stuff, right? Because I'm I'm a learner, right? Uh, oh, we don't have an OLAP tool, so I have to learn SQL. Okay, sounds cool, right? That's what I did. I I need reports. Uh, we don't have reports. Well, where's the data? Over here. How do I get to it? 
you write this query stuff. Okay. <laughs> uh, right. But that's not everybody. Most of these small businesses, or even medium-sized businesses, they're just people who have a business and they're trying to get along. So I feel for them. Uh, but I don't think there's a great solution for them right now, uh, to be honest. Yeah, so here's a uh, comment from uh, Ammon Johns. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, when, when that client has to go back to a second at SEO because they bought, bought cheap, hey, buy cheap equals buy twice. Basically. That's right. Uh, so that's the uh, case. I also have situations. Um, we had a uh, um, this uh, um, rather elderly fellow with, with failing health uh, contacted me. Uh, his site, uh, you know, uh, had a had a penalty, um, uh, a manual Google penalty related to links, and and you know s somebody he paid to clean it up. Uh, um, you know, had failed, and he was basically surrendering. And you know, I, I just turned around and said, "Okay, this is out of my price range." And but this is a case where I feel bad. It's a really well-contained pro project, right? Uh, we can define it in a way that works for everybody. And boom, um, uh, you know, we we took the project on and we helped them recover his penalty. That's the only time I ever compromise on the pricing side of things. Uh, we compromise probably because you want to, I don't know. I, I take some clients because they're in industries that I want to learn about. You know, an industry which is known for a lot of black hat spam. And it's like, okay, let's, let's dig in. Let's take a client in that industry and see if we can make that client work out amid all this stuff. Um, like you said, you know, okay, let's find a client who has a, pen, a penalty. Can we effectively get that penalty removed? Can we document how we do that and learn so that we know, right? right. Um, we actually yeah. do an awful lot of penalty stuff here. Uh, so your scenario is a good one, too. Th this particular scenario was I felt bad for this guy. He, he'd been screwed <laughs> by other SEOs. Right. And, and, you know, I wasn't really that worried about the project spilling over into too much. Right. Right, because uh, we kind of knew what it was about. But but let's take another aspect of this, uh, which is um, um, let's talk about link building. <laughs> um, is link building dead? Um, or should it be? It it. Hmm. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. Because links still matter, right? Matter a lot. Um, despite, you know, everybody wanting to kill the link, the link is still super important. Um, but it, it's the result of something, usually. And I think what when I, when I hear the term link building, to me it means I'm going out and trying to artificially create those links, essentially, right? And that, I have problems with that because it doesn't often help the brand, doesn't help traffic, doesn't help pretty much anything else except this, you know, hey, we went out and we found some EDU sites which had uh, resource pages and we were able to submit and get X. Okay, that's great, but how much does that really help? Is it really time well spent to get your brand out there, to get more authority. Um, so I, I think a lot of that traditional link building is dead. Um, and I'll tell you why I think it is dead, because about, uh, I don't know, 18 months ago, I got tired of people asking, like, oh, uh, we, we totally buy what you're doing, but can we get some of this link building on the side, right? And I got tired of... Uh, of hearing that, I thought maybe I should just find someone who does this um, and does it well, and sort of bring them on as like a Voltron partner, right? Okay. It's really tough to find good link builders, um, is what I figured out. I went to the guys who blog about it a lot and talk about it and said, "Hey, you know, do you want?" Oh, I don't really do that. No. Oh. Okay. Go to the next guy. Yeah. No, I'm pivoting away from that. No. Okay. So it, it winds up then really being um, a 
very select few who I think do this and do it well at this point. Um, most of them are mid-sized to large agencies. Um, and I think they're good at it. But it's expensive. It's really expensive now. Um, and so I don't know if it really pays off at the end of the day versus investing in other things, which might get you the links that you want, but in a more organic manner. So I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what my answer to that is. Is link building dead? Sort of. Uh, the old school way of doing it, probably. Though, sadly, I, I continue to see it work, right? I mean, I've got clients where I see a competitor come on and, you know, they get a whole bunch of directory links, which, uh, ugh, directories, uh, don't get me started. Um, and, you know, you can tell that they've done a lot of this manual, just sort of going out and doing that stuff. And it works. It still works. So I think it clearly is not dead. Do I think it's the future? If I were future-proofing, do I think that I would invest in that area? No. I would not. I still refer people to a couple of link building shops, you know, when they're like, oh, we want to do broken link building or image attribution link building. And it's like, great. Go to these guys. Um, but uh, it's, not, it's not the centerpiece of what I would call a, a link earning campaign. Yes, a link earning campaign. So, yeah, Dwayne Forrester recently had that post where he put out there the notion that every link you get should be a surprise. And I, I thought this was a pretty entertaining thing because uh, um, uh, uh, I get why you said it. It seemed a little bit extreme, right? Um, um, uh, you know, to, to my perspective, uh, uh, you know, it's not like you come in in the morning, oh, I got a link! Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's the way it should work, right? I mean, uh, you're going to know that you're going to get some things uh, even in the course of normal marketing, right? Um, right. I mean, you should be having a good introducing yourself to other people, other brands, other sites, and saying, hey, this is who we are, this is what we offer, this is, you know, all those sorts of things. And some of those should result in links. Um, you know, and if there is, I mean, let's be clear, if there is a resource guide out there and you think that your site should be added to it, well, hell yes, you should be your own advocate and you should walk over to that person and say, hey, you've got this great resource, but we're not on it and we think we should be and here's why, and, you know. Why not? Right? Um, it's fine. So right. I don't view that. Uh, so yeah, I don't think all of it has to be a surprise. And frankly, none of it should be. These specific links might be a surprise. But the fact that you're getting links based on the fact that I did X and Z and I then marketed it in these areas, you should know you're going to receive some amount of links. Um, and if you don't, um, you know, that's, that's on you. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, no, th there's a lot of different ways. Like, there's these tools, uh, competitive link finding tools, where you put in your your website and then you put in two or three of your competitors, and it will return pages where more than one of your competitors are are listed, uh, and you're not. So that's a, you know a research tool that can help you find uh, out how to do that. Um, there's um, you have these places on the web where you have mentions right. uh, and say, hey, would you mind turning that into a link? You should want that because you have the referral traffic possibility, right? Exactly. Yes. Um, so it doesn't make sense to say or suggest that people can't do that. And then there's link reclamation, which is the whole process of uh, seeing uh, what 404 errors your site uh, reports and finding out if it's a result of, of someone, um, you know, implementing a, a bad uh, link to you, right, yes. and not checking it. Um, you know, that, that all seems like a uh, fair game to me. I mean, uh, and... The first one isn't my favorite. Uh, the other two I like a lot. The first one you, you can certainly do. I guess, uh, who was it? It was either Ross Hudgens or Justin Briggs who wrote about, like, you know, don't build a, a link profile based on your competitors, right? Because um, you, you want to build, like, 
we want to build a link profile that no one else can replicate. Was basically what the message was, which I thought was a brilliant way to think of, of it in terms of like, you don't want to go to all the places where everybody else is and say, I want to be listed here, I want to be listed there. Like, you know, who cares? Um, you want to you want to figure out a way where it's like, you got those links that the other competitors are like, what the, you know, how yeah. do they, you know, what? Like, uh, you know, there's no way, right? And so you just build this profile, which it's like, good luck, right? Chase me down, but uh, I'm going to go to, to new ground. I'm not going to play in this little playground over here. Yeah, well, you know, to me, uh, I mean, I threw it out there because I actually think it's a reasonable thing to do. It's a foolish okay. thing to do if it's the only thing you do. Exactly. Um, right, because it, it's like... Um, there are businesses that will go out there and just do competitive backlinking for you and say, okay, we're going to pull your competitive backlinks and then we're going to uh, you know, contact the best ones and ask for a link from them. And it's like, okay, great. So you're building a business plan to be 10% of the size of your competitors. <laughs> because you're going to be 10% of the time. Right. That doesn't mean you shouldn't do it, but, yeah. um, you know, so. So uh, here's the question because I. The reason why I, I'm against so many of these things, because I'm, I'm with you, right? If it's part of a comprehensive thing and you're doing everything, hell yes, I'm going to do that, right? You'd be right. dumb not to do it, right? But whenever I talk to people about this, more often than not, it's like, oh, we're doing this and one other thing. Or we're doing this and that thing, right? And it's like, no, 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 right? That, that will not work. That's not going to... And so... I, we go back to what you talked about prior, mindset, right? And my view is, is that when you when I start talking to people about that stuff, I find that their mindset is not correct, right? They're, they're not approaching it the right way. So, uh, I mean, it's, it's the way, I, when I tell people, it's the same reason why I tell people, write for search engines, right? They go, you're awful. You're supposed to write for the user. You're an awful, ugly person, right? But if you read what I'm saying, I'm like, most people, when they write for people, they really suck at it, right? I mean, they're really bad writers. Mm -hmm. But if you tell them, hey, write for a search engine, guess what they do? They actually write better content. Um, better content for the user. Uh, and so... I think it's the same thing when I hear people talk about, oh, we're going to do these link thing and that link thing and that link thing. I'm like, okay, but you know what? Let's not. And let's, because your mindset is in the wrong place because you're going to go down that road and that's all, you're going to start to just, you know, what is it? Uh, you know, the, you're going to hit that minimum, right? Uh, you're going to hit that minimum level of what you can do there and you're going to think that's it instead of seeing all this great stuff that's out there. Um, but you're right. I mean, if you have if you have the right mindset, you absolutely should do all of those things. Um, yeah, I mean, the way I think of it these days, it, and you know, it, it gets into the the central question we started with: whether you, you know, uh, you might call this SEO, and I might consider this part of SEO, or at least it's certainly part of what we do here. Um, uh, I don't actually worry about the label that much, to tell you the truth. Exactly. Yeah. But, I mean, reputation and visibility building is probably about two-thirds of what we do at Stone Temple Consulting these days. And, you know, when you translate that, well, first of all, just, okay, what did you say? PR firm. You just said PR firm. You just said Stone Temple is a PR firm. And hell no, we're not a PR firm. We use a very technical process to analyze how we go about our reputation and visibility building that the average PR firm would never touch. Right. right, and that's part and parcel of how we approach it. So, um, at, at the end of the day, I personally just don't worry whether you call that SEL. I mean, really, the only time that I, um, you know, focus on the use of the word SEO is when I want to make a disparaging remark about someone, and they say they don't even know how to spell SEO, and that's <laughs> about the main time that I use the, the <laughs> phrase in, in normal conversations. Right, so. Um, I'm with you. I, I think uh, I don't really care. I think that's what I've, uh, I've tried to say badly. I, I don't care to really define it, right? I do. 
I do the marketing tasks which I believe are going to help my client. Um, generally, and, and the reason why I still call it SEO is because my clients generally come to me and that's how they talk about it or as they go in, right? So for me to continue to get business, uh, it would be like, you know, oh, let's rebrand and let's call ourselves uh, uh, jelly Jellyfish Farms, right? Well, okay, but that's not really how people are going to search for me. So that's the reason why I, I keep saying it's SEO, but you're right. Uh, it doesn't really matter what we call it. Uh, all that matters is that what we do impacts our clients' businesses positively. And uh, if, you know, if you have the appetite to say, I want to do these things, I want to explore new stuff, I want to try new things, I want to screw some things up along the way, um, then, uh, then you're going to win, right? Uh, you win for your clients and you win, you win for yourself. But, uh, yeah, I, for, for a long time, for actually, I think I took a year off. I think I swore off. It was one of my New Year's resolutions in 2012 to swear off the debate. Maybe it was 2013. Because uh, it, it got so crazy. Uh, but I think it's important only because I, I think there are a lot of really smart, talented, hardcore SEOs who are not... Uh, I, I don't want to see them go the way of the dodo bird, but I think if they could just open up a little bit more and adopt some other strategies, they might uh, they might find some, some greater success. So... Um yeah, I just did a little quick research, and based on your desire to rebrand your uh, services around uh, jellyfish farms, uh, I want to offer you some SEO services, and I'm going to guarantee you number one ranking. <laughs> well, if you go to my asset, my Google Plus profile, you'll see it's one of my occupations. Ah, there you go. I'm a purple jellyfish farmer. Not just a regular jellyfish farmer, but a purple jellyfish farmer. Awesome. So, what's special about purple jellyfish? I, I guess Ronnie and I have to ask. Yeah. I, I mean, if you have to ask, then, you know, please. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, we're, we're a little bit past the top of the hour, so we should yep. wrap it up. Did you want to offer any closing comments, uh, AJ? No, it's been a fun conversation. I, I, hopefully, people got some, some stuff out of it. I think we uh, uh, covered a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, I'm sure uh, the dojo uh, will uh, take it up on, I think they're doing it tomorrow, so I think we'll get a rebuttal tomorrow, so that'll be fun. Uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. And also, uh, I, I'm, I'm probably not going to do this calculation, but I do think that we uh, have something of a record of words per comment that should be uh, uh, um, published so that somebody can try to beat it. Uh, but thank you, people, for all the extensive comments. So many great comments. Uh, uh, here, uh, I love Bill Slosky's. I've been inside link building factories that would make Matt Cotts choke, and they left me feeling somewhat sick too. But uh, um, and things like that. But uh, thanks everybody for watching. That's it for the digital marketing excellence show for today. Uh, on Tuesday, we will uh, Mark Traphagen and I on the digital marketing answer show. We'll be talking about. Uh, uh, how to do content marketing without losing your mind. That's a follow-up to one we did a while back about how to do social media without losing your mind. And yes, there will be one in the future about how to raise kids without losing your mind. The problem being, uh, three kids later, I'm probably not qualified for that one. Um, so, <laughs> in any case, uh, thanks everybody and have thanks a Thanks for having me, Eric. Absolutely.